If you're new to game, you're probably wondering, when is enough enough? So let's say you start off and you pick up a beautiful woman, you start dating her. The question becomes, when, is, when do you need to stop learning game? Is there a point in the relationship where maybe you're married even and you're starting to wonder, I, do I even need to practice game anymore? Do I need to continue to improve myself and learn and understand women? Let's dig into this a little bit. And the answer to that question is absolutely freaking not. You never stop. It's like saying, should you stop breathing? Once you learn something and you get some benefits from it, you should never stop doing it until you find something as good or better. And, and here, I really need to address this early on because here's what I see happen so frequently is somebody will start to learn game, they'll start to implement game, and they'll start seeing the positive results from it and they'll realize how real it is. And as soon as they get good enough, They'll meet a girl. It's, it's strange. They'll meet a woman and then they'll fall in love and she's not like everything else that, you, that they've ever learned and there's no point and it's all bullshit because now they found the one who loves them. Right? You should never stop improving yourself. You should never stop practicing game. Now, the word game has some negative you know, uh, emotions attached to it, but who gives a shit, Right? Because here's what game is. If you look at my drawing, this guy up here on the mountain, looking down there at all of the, the people there below, game is climbing the mountain instead of trying to climb the people. It's understanding the behaviors. It's understanding how the interaction works. It's understanding what kind of person you are and how you improve yourself and how you build strength and get up early in the day and have good positive structures in your life and how you get masculine spaces. And then you learn how to project and communicate that out in the populace. So instead of going in here and trying to talk to all of these little individuals, you focus on the mountain, which is becoming the best version of yourself, challenging yourself and learning. And when you get up to the top, you can see everything below you as clear as day. It's completely obvious from where I'm at right now what's happening. I can use, I can use game, which is it's crazy, to, to understand what's happening in the news and in the media. It's incredible. Game is analysis and observation. It doesn't, it, game is not going to allow you, if you pick up a bad process climbing the mountain, you're going to fall down and you're going to die. Game won't allow it. Game only allows things in there that are true. And that's why it's so critical. It's so critical to understand what humans are and how our interactions actually work. So what do we know? What, do we, what is observable about humans? We know that there is absolutely a dual strategy. We may not talk about it. We may not have learned about it. This may have been the first time you've heard about it, but what, a dual, what it is not is bullshit. Because when you apply this, when you apply the dual strategy to a problem, guess what? You get an instant solution. You understand exactly what's going on. What else do we know? We know that there's an ovulatory shift, that our species in, is intrinsically tied to the, that our ovulation, our tide, is tied to the moon. Our up and down times are tied to the sun. These aren't just random particles just like out there, woo, woo, doing random shit. Like this is legit. Like this is happening. And there's things attached to that and related to it. And we do not talk about this. None of this gets discussed at any level. We know that our relationships with women and our relationships with the world are taught to us at a communal level. That we're designed to live in these smaller communities because that helped our interactions along and we're able to observe how to operate inside that community. And there was simple expectations. Now we have a billion suggestions on what we could do every moment, something we could change. We know that we have a, a, a violent, almost violent reaction to stranger danger. So meeting new people, going out and approaching is something that doesn't come 
it natural to everybody. Some people are naturally going to go out there and they're going to want to engage and talk and they're not going to have any negative repercussions. And those are, they're, they're lucky, maybe, maybe they're unlucky ones. I don't know. But what we do know is that a majority of our population feels un has stranger danger. What else does game tell us, right? Game tell us, tells us that what you're doing isn't working. Why isn't it working? I don't know. Probably because you're watching this video, right? It's probably why I'm shooting this video. Because I know that your shit is not working out for you and you don't have a strategy for it. That you're finding game, that you're finding this, and you're starting to understand that what you're doing isn't working. It has not worked. You are not happy. You are not satisfied. You are not getting your... Uh, intimate needs met in your relationships. Your women are unhappy. You have too much debt. You're overweight. And what does game tell you? Game tells you right away. You need testosterone. You need to be. A, you need to rise above the pack. You need to focus on the dual strategy, and climb the mountains and make challenges for yourself. And what happens? That's game. You learn how to interact, and what you're doing isn't working. Doesn't apply anymore because you're not doing it anymore. You're actually focusing. 100% on tested philosophies that are that you can go out and you can test for yourself to find out if they work or not. And if you give it an honest effort, if you go out there and give it an honest effort, I'd say in most cases, anything that tells you to get out there and make it an effort, you're going to see results. So the obvious question that we go into right now, is it ethical? Well, I want to meet a guy who's never, he doesn't have to learn game, he just knows it automatically. Really? Really? Is that what you did when you were a little girl playing Barbies with your friends? Did you sit there? Did you not talk about game there? Or did you go, I won Ken because he's got a nice house and a Mercedes. What did you play? You role played this stuff out. Guess what we did? We jumped around. We got put on Ritalin. We got whatever happened to us. Is it ethical? Is it ethical for people to learn and adapt to the environment that they exist in? Is this some practical? Should we defy our biology to make you feel good? And here's the reality about is learning game ethical? We should have been taught game as children. From our parents, from our family, from our community, and from a, from a, a religious or spiritual place. We didn't. We didn't have these conversations with our fathers. Our dads did not set us down and say that women had a dual strategy and if you don't want to get her pregnant, watch out for the 14th day after her period. Nobody said that. Nobody told you that girls like alpha males that have, and why? Because they have higher testosterone and they select out and their behaviors are very noticeable in contrast with betas. And they are signaled, females are signaled by higher levels of testosterone in males. And they will, they're attracted to men that project these qualities. And the, the men typically with higher testosterone typically are going to be more confident, are going to have less risk aversion. They're going to have all these side benefits. They're essentially going to have the pillars of attraction. That's what game tells us, right? Is, so is it ethical for us to talk about that? You figure that question out. Is it disparaging? I love this question. I love women. If all women on this planet disappeared today, I would be unhappy. I would probably be dead in three weeks or a month. I would not want to live on a planet without that, without women. They are an absolute compliment to my life. I love them. I go above and beyond to be a good alpha for them. To, I do. So is that disparaging? Do I have a negative view on women? Is saying that women have a dual strategy that sometimes they want a guy to provide for them uh, financial things and emotional support and then other times they want just a rough and tough alpha to throw them around? Is that disparaging? Is it worth it? Is learning game worth it to you? I don't know. How much time are you investing right now in trying to, to actually have like a cool sex life? How is your sex life? What's it looking like? Do you want to talk about it? Or do you just don't want to talk about it? So is it worth it? Well, I don't know. What's the return and what's the investment? Is making some small changes in your life and the weight and losing a little bit of weight and getting rid of a little bit fat and getting a little bit more muscular and, and uh, having a strategy to be a better man and then applying it, is it worth it to you? Well, if it's not, then, I, there, then there's something seriously wrong with you. Um, 
Will it get better on its own? I love this. Well, you know, I'm going to wait until the first of the year. I, I used to do this. I honestly, I do, I have to acknowledge my own weakness on this one because I remember many a times I said, I, it'll, I'll do it this on the first. It doesn't get better later. It never does. It, has, it starts right now. It starts in this moment. If it's later, it's never going to happen. So just like acknowledge it and just do what you're doing. Game is a project based on actual experiences collected, applied, and tried. Okay? So experiences. So game is a collection of male experiences. The good ones should rise to the top. The ones that are the best, the ones that are getting risen to the top, that are getting collected and then applied in people's lives, you're going to see the results of it. If it works, keep it on. That's game. Game is not, if it's not working, don't do it. If it's not working for other people, it's probably not gonna work for you. There are some, there are some nuances in game, depending on how far up this hierarchy you are. But it's, it's an effort in observation of taking information that you gather and applying it and learning from it. Okay, so what do we know about men? Men need projects. We don't, men do, we don't, I don't call my buddy and be like, hey, let's get some coffee this, I don't call my buddy and say, hey, let's get some coffee and talk about life. No, this is not what guys do. We don't come over and fix my car. I'm going to shovel the driveway. I'm going to go scouting for fish. I'm going to go something. We need a project. Game is a project. Us collectivizing and communicating our experiences is a project, and this project brings us together. There's no such thing, theoretically, as a bad project. Anything that brings men together and puts them into an observa a positive observational loop where they want to improve their lives and their romance in their lives is a positive. Men thrive in statistics. We need the numbers. We take everything that we come across and we turn it into an analytical study. Football, gasoline prices, taxes, percentages. Everything is statistic orientated. How many, how many stats do you know about baseball or football or hockey that you have stored up in your head, right? How many stats do you have about your personal life, about your skill set, about your personal game? Not some guy playing basketball on television. What's your score? Where are you at? When the lens of the world shifts, when, when you change the way you see the world, and that's the lens, your eyes change, the way you see the world changes, there, there's an event that changes on the backside. The way people see you also changes. You become a new person through this process of changing your worldview to having it more aligned, more focused, more centered. And that's what game provides us. The game provides us the lens to observe the behaviors, to adapt them and try them, see what happens, and adapt to that. And as we change how we see it, that's the, that's the moment when people change the way they treat us. And here's the final part about game. There is no ending to it. Well, you can end. You can stop practicing game. But you'll be back. Okay? You will be back. Or you will just die. There's that too. It is a cycle. It starts over again. You climb the mountain again. You observe the information again. You dig in a little bit deeper into the strategy. You understand how you can be better at this strategy and meet these needs better. You figure out more about how the obligatory shift affects women and how... Women are actually going out. They're going out. They're getting ready. There's women. There's a woman right now. I, I couldn't even do the numbers. Let's just say 10,000 girls right now in America who are getting ready, who are like putting lotion on all over their bodies and put on their matching bras and underwear, and they're getting ready to go out tonight. And guess what they want? Guess what they're looking for? Guess what they're demanding? They're looking for you to become this guy so that they can find you. Or be in your space. So as you learn this, you, you cycle it through. 
you learn, oh shit, girls are going out tonight right in my neighborhood who are looking for love. And they want it in a positive and exciting manner. That's not complicated, right? What do you do? You come back around. You go through the dialectic process. You look at the verbiage, the language, and what you're absorbing, what you're learning about all this. And then you take it back. Men need projects. You distill the information. You start over. Welcome to the dating pipeline. That was a good one. I liked it. Cut.